Okay. Uh, good morning. Thank you all for being here. I'm Denver Police Chief Ron Thomas, and I'm joined today by uh, Denver District Attorney Beth McCann, as well as Ginger Walker, uh, the mother of Colin Walker, who we'll hear about uh, uh, this morning. On behalf of the Denver Police Department, I want to pass along our condolences to the Walker family and all of those who have lost someone to fentanyl. Our hearts break for Colin's loved ones, and we thank Ginger for making the trip here from Texas to join us today. I've learned that Colin has always helped others and was adventurous and loved the outdoors, as you can see here from this photo. I want to preface my remarks by saying that the charges uh, that have been filed against the suspect in this, uh, well, there have been charges filed in this case, so we're limited in the information that we can share today in this forum, uh, but here's an overview. On November 19th, 2023, 25-year-old Colin Walker's roommate found him unresponsive and called 911. Tragically, Colin could not be revived. Uh, there were early indications that the death may have been fentanyl-related, fentanyl so the Denver Police Fentanyl Investigation Team was assigned the case. Through this extensive months-long investigation, our fentanyl investigation team, with the help of Ginger and Colin's friends, uncovered evidence that led to the identification of the suspected dealer. Investigators obtained an arrest warrant, and on August 28, 30-year-old Jamal Gamal was arrested in San Francisco where he lives. It is expected that he'll be brought back to Denver later this month. Before in inviting DA McCann to discuss the charges, I wanna briefly just address a couple of items. One, the danger of fentanyl, and two, how the Denver Police Department, along with our partners, including the Denver District Attorney's Office, remain steadfast in our commitment to removing both drug dealers and this extremely dangerous substance from our streets. In 2023, uh, there were nearly 400 deaths in Denver um, in, uh, that included the presence of fentanyl. Fentanyl is a power synthetic opiate which is up to 50 times more potent than heroin and 100 times more potent than morphine. Overdoses caused by fentanyl can happen faster and therefore may be harder to stop than those caused by other opioids. The drug can come in many forms including pills, capsules, rock, and powder form. DEA lab testing reveals that seven out of every 10 pills with fentanyl contain a potentially lethal dose. In 2023, we created our fentanyl investigations team to combat this uh, significant challenge. Uh, and their focus has been on distribu disrupting distribu distribution networks, introducing or reducing the supply of fentanyl in our community, and assisting with suspected fentanyl overdose death investigations where there's information that could lead to identifying a dealer or person who provided the narcotics. To date, this determined team has seized more than 230,000 fentanyl pills and approximately 25,000 grams of fentanyl pills and, and, and powder combined. Uh, and that doesn't even include uh, what our uh, street officers have recovered themselves. Uh, that's hundreds of thousands of potentially lethal doses. The team recently dismantled three different pill press operations in the metro area and has made 30 felony arrests this year for different charges relating to fentanyl and drug distribution. In closing, I thank the Denver District Attorney's Office and our federal partners for helping us hold offenders accountable. And lastly, for those who see this story and may be struggling with drug addiction or other substance misuse, we encourage them to reach out for help through Colorado Crisis Services by calling 1-844-439-TALK, and that's 8255, or uh, by texting TALK to 38255. Uh, so with that, I'll turn it over to DA McCann. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Thomas, and uh, thank you for coming today. Uh, I want to start by also sharing my condolences to the friends and family of Colin who have joined us here today. Many of them have come from Texas to be here uh, to support um, Mrs. Walker in this time of grief. Um, I also want to recognize the Denver Police Department detectives and the prosecutors in my office whose outstanding work got us to this point today. This is the sixth time my office has charged an accused drug dealer with fentanyl distribution resulting in death since the law was enacted in 2022. Five of the cases are still open. In one of the cases, the defendant has pled guilty um, and has finished that case. 
I want to emphasize to the community that prosecution of fentanyl cases is a high priority for my office. We have um, been giving increasing attention to these cases. As you can hear, as you heard from Chief Thomas, the amount of fentanyl in our community is ever increasing and it is extremely disturbing. Uh, this drug contains, um, is so lethal that it, we take it um, a little more, we look at it a little more closely uh, when we're looking at the kind of results that we see from people who end up using fentanyl. These cases um, will be prosecuted in Denver, and I hope that the charges that we have filed against Mr. Jamal will send the message to the community that people who are accused of selling this poison in Denver will be prosecuted by my office to the fullest extent of the law. My thoughts continue to be with all of those who have lost loved ones to fentanyl, including Colin's mother, Ginger, and his family and friends who are with us today, and all of those who knew and loved him. It is now my pleasure to introduce Ginger Walker, Mr. Walker's mother, who will make a few remarks. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for being here. It's very difficult. Um, I never thought I'd be at a press conference talking about the death of my son, and never did I think I'd be talking about the death of my son due to fentanyl. Like everybody, I've heard about the fentanyl crisis on TV, watching it on the news like you guys. Didn't think that it would ever touch me or my family. We were just a normal family. Colin was working, went back to school, um, just was doing great. And I want people to know that fentanyl trafficking was able to touch my child, it's able to touch your child. I mean, it just, it's unbelievable. And I guarantee you, if you don't know anybody right now that fentanyl has touched, you will in the next years to come. Colin was always kind, sweet, loved dogs like his mother, and he rarely got in trouble. He excelled in sports, the arts, made good grades. He was quiet and gentle. He was beloved by his teachers, parents, and all of his friends and family. Um, he did, like many others, struggle at times with anxiety and depression. And in my mind, this is what makes these kids most vulnerable to the evil of drug, tra dr drug traffickers like the one who killed our son, Jamal Gamal. People need to know that these dealers, or what I like to call them murderers, are selling lethal pills in communities throughout the entire country. And to make it even worse, they're selling these lethal pills like has been discussed through our U.S. mail. They're hiding behind a computer. They're not necessarily standing on drug on the corners of streets like you think about. They're behind a computer. They're selling it through the mail. It's going through FedEx, UPS, and the United States Postal Service. And this is how Jamal Gamal preyed upon my son that resulted in his death. And this has to be stopped. Our hearts will never heal after the loss of our son. We're never going to be whole. And we're not going to be okay. But we're going to spend every day trying to track down people like this and make Jamal Gamal responsible for Colin's death. And we can't bring Colin back. But our goal is to help others and to help other people not lose their son or their daughters. Before finishing, I want to give credit to a lot of people. Where's Jason? <laughs> Detective Jason Brees, you're my hero. The Denver DA's office, thank you so much for prosecuting this case. Chief, thank you for supporting Jason and the whole detectives. And also to the media, thank you for being here today. Please keep telling these stories because this is an ending. And I mean, they need to know about this fentanyl trafficking. I had no idea 
I wish I could have warned Colin. I wish I could have warned my son. And anybody that has a son or daughter going to college, high school, they need to know that it just takes one pill. One pill will kill you. And I guess that's the main thing I want to say is to these kids is one pill kills. So anyway, I just want to thank you. Please keep telling this story and other stories. And thank you very much. You know, I just want to call out how brave Ginger is for coming here uh, from Texas and uh, and just talking about this very painful subject. Uh, so that ends our uh, uh, the presentation portion of this press conference. So I'll just open it up to anyone that has questions. Chief, given that this is uh, considered a crisis and there's a rise of this all over the metro and other areas of the country, why is it that we've only had six of these cases? Uh, actually go forward. Um, is there difficulty in tracking these folks down? There is. You know, so I think, you know, the, the difficulty is not only in identifying the dealers. Obviously, they uh, do their best to remain uh, in secret, but also, you know, being able to track down that specific lethal dose to an individual and identify them. That's what makes these cases very difficult. But we have a very dedicated team that, uh, that works hard to make sure that we've done it now six times. Well, obviously that, that adds to the challenge. I mean, again, as she alluded to, these aren't, uh, I think what we typically think of, you know, drug dealers standing on a street corner. Um, you know, these are people that are operating behind computers, you know, operating sometimes not even in this state, maybe not even in this country. And so that adds to, to the complexity and the challenge, and that's why I'm so proud of the detectives that are still able to uncover these, uh, these individuals. Thank you. Did you leave us to answering any questions? Maybe. Uh, <laughs> it depends. <laughs> thank you. I, I appreciate your time, and I'm so sorry yeah. for your loss, but thank you for, for speaking today. You're welcome. You're, you're welcome. Thank you. So I, I know we're talking about this, this new law at the, at the DA's office that just that came about just a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. Right. And yeah, for me, that was a really big deal because I live in Texas. And so we have different laws and I wasn't aware of this law in Colorado. And so I think before he can, I guess I can use his name. <laughs> Jamal Gamal probably just would have been prosecuted for distributing illegal substances. But now with the law that they're distributing with the result of death, that's huge because I think they'll get more than a slap on the hand. I think, well, I'm hoping that, you know, we can put someone like him away for a long time as opposed to just getting off just on a drug charge, you know. So I don't know if that's correct, Chief. You probably, they're the experts, not me. But, but yeah, it is a big deal to me because I think that he can get a stiffer punishment. Yeah. Online, um. Yeah, and there, you know, so many kids are struggling with depression and anxiety, and they think that they're getting a prescription, you know, pill. And uh, it's not saying that's great, but um, but you know, it's they don't know that it's laced with fentanyl. I think they really don't know. And, and I know on college campuses we have friends in Texas that. Um, at a fraternity party, hey, you have a test tomorrow, you're anxious, you know, here's a Xanax or whatever. And then they don't know, but it can be laced with fentanyl. And we know of people that two kids at the University of Texas, they split a pill. One kid died, the other one didn't. And it goes back to just how lethal it is. And um, 
So I don't know. I'm not a fentanyl expert. I'm maybe becoming one, unfortunately. But um, yeah, I don't know. Thank you. You said that you're grateful for this uh, new law in Colorado. Is this something that you hope to see come to Texas and other parts of the country? As well? Oh, for sure. I, I don't even know it, honestly what the laws in Texas are. Um, I probably will be finding out soon. I don't know. Does anybody know what the laws in Texas are? I have no idea. Sorry. But it does sound like that you would hope that that comes forward. Yeah, and I will be investigating that because that's hopefully this will be my mission from henceforward is to try to educate and uh, maybe hopefully go before the you know Texas Senate at some point. So sounds like some advocacy in your future. Yes, for sure. <laughs> yes, definitely. Thank you.